All right, uh, now we have seen second order differential equations that do not have y. Uh, the other type of differential equations that we can reduce, well, second order equations that we can re reduce to third order differential equations are um, second order differential equations that do not have x. Now, um, here is an example of this, right? So here, uh, the second derivative of y is present, right? So it, it's just, just, just this. Uh, y itself is present and the first derivative is, is present, right? But th there is no x. Now, the um, uh, trick to, to do it is, is, is kind of, it is a very neat trick, so to say, right? So we are in fact going to do the same thing. So we are going to uh, introduce a new variable z that is also going to be dy dx, but we are going to treat it as a function of y instead of a function of x, right? So let me explain what I mean. So first of all, you need to, to recall the uh, chain rule, right? So chain rule, just, just the usual chain rule for um, functions of one variable, something like this. So du dt equals du dw times dw dt, right? Now, uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, just, just say that y is now going to be my independent variable. Well, since my differential equation does not have x, it means that I, I don't really need like the, a slot for independent variable that that, uh, that is usually occupied by x, right? So which means that I can introduce another independent variable and I'm, I'm going to say that, okay, now y is going to be my independent variable. All right, and then I'm going to, to say that my z is going to be uh, dy dx. And, and then I, I, I will want to, um, to figure out what the second derivative of, um, uh, of uh, y is, right? So, and the, the second derivative, so y double prime is really the, um, derivative of the first derivative of dy dx so which is really the derivative of z dz dx right but again since i do not have x essentially right um i shouldn't differentiate with respect to x and here the chain rule comes uh, very comes comes very handy so instead of differentiating my z with respect to x i am going to differentiate z with respect to y and multiply this by the derivative of y with respect to x, right? This is the chain rule. But now notice that my dy dx is just, just z, right? And this is really dz dy times z. Okay? So, uh, when I do this um, transformation, so my left-hand side, which is the second derivative, of y with respect to x, it, it just just becomes d uh, z dy times z, and in the right hand side, my dy dx it, it just becomes z, and my y uh, stays as is; it remains the, the same. Only now it is treated as the um, independent variable. Okay. All right, so this is what we do here. And essentially the rule here is that we are going to, uh, to basically uh, keep y as is. So we are going to replace y with y, but now we are considering it, considering we consider that it plays the role of x. So it is an independent variable. So it is independent. Uh, then my uh, first derivative y prime it, it kind of becomes just uh, just z and my second derivative y double prime becomes z times z prime but now this z prime is is really dz dy rather than dz dx okay um, so that, that's the idea and um, uh, by, by doing this we essentially change the second order derivative um, y double prime to the product of z and dz dy so but the order of the differentiation remains well it becomes one instead of two so it is kind of a 
neat trick here. And uh, by, by doing this, we will also reduce our differential equation to a first order differential equation, right? So uh, here is how it goes. So again, so recall that we are replacing y with uh, basically y, but now it becomes an independent variable. Now dy dx kind of becomes z and d2y dx square becomes uh, z times dz dy. Okay, so let, let me do this. So now the left-hand side is, is now z times dz dy equals minus uh, 2 times to be honest, I don't really understand why it is minus. Okay, let, let me keep it as, as is. So minus two over one minus y times dy dx is, is, is really z squared. Right? Okay, uh, now the next thing that, that, that I can do, I can really basically erase z here and here. I will cancel by z. Well, strictly speaking, when I do this, I actually divide by z. And if I divide by z, then I need to check what happens if z is zero. But notice that if z is zero, uh, then the zero z is going to be a solution of the original differential equation before I cancel by z, and it's also going to be a solution of the new differential equation after I uh, divide it by z. So it's not going to pose a problem here because, well, it's just for the, the, this particular example, I, I don't really have to. To do anything about it. Now this is a linear differential equation so I'm going to move everything over to the left hand side so it's it's going to be basically well let, let, let me do it like this so it's going to be this right? so plus is zero so this is a linear differential equation and the integrating factor is basically to find the integrating factor I, I write e to the power um, antiderivative of this so 2 divided by 1 minus y the uh, y so which is e to the power 2 and the antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus y is is what is minus a logarithm of absolute value of 1 minus y right um, because the antiderivative of 1 over y is a logarithm of absolute value of y um, but here we have a minus sign, so we need to, to put it in front of, uh, in front of everything. Yeah, it's, it's correct. Okay. Now, what is this really? Um, this is really, um, is what is one over E raised to the power one of absolute value of one minus Y. And because of. So it is one over because of the minus sign here, and it should be squared because of, of two here, right? So e to the power of ln of anything is 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 whatever is in the ln. So it's going to be uh, basically just one over one absolute value of one minus y squared. And now the beautiful thing here is that um, when we square it, it doesn't matter whether the um, expression inside the absolute value is positive or negative, right? So I'm going to use the identity that a square is the same as absolute value of a square. Because regardless of the sign of a, its absolute value is always positive, right? So it, the absolute value of a could be either plus or minus a. But when we square it, so the minus becomes plus. So this, this is really just 1 over 1 minus y squared, right? Okay. So uh, this is the integrating factor. Now, um, multiplying by the integrating factor, so notice that the right-hand side is zero. So when we when I multiply by the integrating factor, what I get is, is just this, is, is dz dy times my integrating factor, which is one over one minus y squared. I'm oh, sorry. Um, this is z and 
the derivative of everything with respect to, to y is going to be 0. All right? Let me check. Yeah. So, which means that uh, the derivative of uh, the product of z and 1 over 1 minus y uh, squared is 0. So, which means that z itself, z divided by 1 minus y squared, is a constant. Some c, c1 or, or something like that. All right? Okay. Um, but what is z really? So now recall that my z is really uh, dy dx. And uh, this thing here is nothing else but a separable differential equation in x and y, right? So moving dx over to the right hand side, I will get this. Now I've got to integrate again to solve it. So I'm going to integrate this. Okay, so the antiderivative of the left-hand side is just one over one minus y. Am I right? Yeah, I think I'm right. So if I differentiate this, I'm going to get uh, the minus sign from um, differentiating the power of minus one and another minus sign from differentiating minus y. So they will cancel each other out. And I will get just 1 over 1 minus y squared, so d squared. So this is going to be c1x plus c2. All right, and now just flipping it over, I get 1 minus y equals 1 divided by c1x plus c2. And with solving for y, I get... Uh, y is 1 minus 1 over c1x plus c2, and that's essentially the final answer. Okay, so th this is how we can uh, get rid of, well, how we can reduce a second-order differential equation that does not have x into a first-order differential equation and solve it in kind of in, in, in two steps. Okay, uh, so here is the official uh, solution on the slides. Oh yeah, by the way, so notice that uh, here they do it as a separable equation rather than as a linear equation, actually, because this equation here is in fact at the same time separable and linear, and it is possible to solve it as a separable or as a linear, but my advice is that always solve it as a linear if, if both ways work, because it is just going to be easier. So if it, it is just a, if, it, if you do it as a separable differential equation, then you will have to kind of consider in order to get rid of the absolute value sign here, you will have to consider like different possibilities. So what happens if that is positive? What happens if that is negative? With linear equations, you don't really have to do that. OK, um, so and it's kind of a bit longer, but if the final answer is, is of course, the same. Okay, so that's how we do um, second-order differential equations that do not have x in, in them.